has extended health insurance to 20 million Americans, prevented insurers from denying coverage for pre-existing conditions, and provided billions of dollars for the Medicaid health care program for the poor. But for Republicans, it represents big government meddling. They say it's pushing up insurance premiums unsustainably. After seven years of fighting the legislation tooth and nail, the GOP finally have their chance to repeal. Insofar as Trump just wants to start pulling at the thread and destroy Obamacare, it's not that difficult to do. He can simply cut back the taxes and let it collapse. He can res uh, take away a few rules and requirements that we put in place, like everybody has to have health insurance and the thing will collapse. The difficult part will become, what do you replace it with? Some Republicans have said that the process of repealing Obamacare could take months and developing a replacement even longer. But the president-elect is putting pressure on his party to act fast. In a press conference this Wednesday, Trump said that the repeal and replacement should happen simultaneously. If you look, this administration... Last Friday, French far-right leader Marine Le Pen claimed she had no specific ties to Donald Trump or to the alt-right movement that helped propel him to office. Well, uh, today, the National Front leader spotted in New York, guess where? At Trump Tower. Reuters reports she was seen having a meeting with three unidentified men in the building. Uh, declined to say uh, whether she was there for personal or professional reasons. Earlier, her spokesperson labeled her New York trip a private visit. We'll have more news later. Time now for the France 24 debate. <clears throat> Could there be a deal to end Europe's longest-running mm. conflict? For his very first assignment, the new UN General Sec Secretary General flying into Geneva to get a Cyprus peace process over the line. It's not just Antonio Guterres with leaders, uh, representatives from Turkey, Greece, the UK Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, the European Commission President. Marathon talks have blossomed into a who's who of nations with a stake in the small East Mediterranean island. Trouble had been brewing long before Turkey invaded in 1974 to prevent coup leaders from uniting with Greece. Now, after many a failed attempt, the crucial argument over borders inside a federated Cyprus is on the table. To look at a map is to understand why this nation of 1.2 million inhabitants is so strategic to its sponsor states, to former colonial power Britain, which still owns two military bases there, and to the wider region. It's about location, and as we'll see, it's about timing. Uh, why do so many insist that now is the moment to reach a deal when so much else around is unraveling? Today in the France 24 debate, Will it be peace at last for Cyprus? And uh, with us from Nicosia, France 24 uh, correspondent Jasper Mortimer. We're used to seeing him in Ankara. He's there to report for us. Thank you for, for being with us. We'll be joined a little bit later from the Cypriot capital by Andres Theopanos, who heads the uh, Cyprus Center for European and International Affairs. And in Geneva, Ezra Eigen, correspondent for Turkish Cypriot Daily, Havadis newspaper. Here in the studio, Andres Evagor, deputy Thank head you. of uh, Eurosport, is uh, uh, with us as well. Andres, London-born, with Cypriot roots, who's been following it all for uh, as well. The France 24 debate on Facebook and Twitter, the hashtag F24debate. Uh, before 1974, Varosha on the eastern coast was a popular beach resort. Today it's a ghost town, but now for the second year running, and this is perhaps indicative, uh, of the mood right now, Turkish authorities allowing a uh, uh, Orthodox Pope to bless the Orthodox Christmas in Varosha, a break with the past where the Turks considered it a no-go zone because of its proximity to the line of demarcation. Andres Evagora, your thoughts when you look at those images? Well, it's very emotional. I, I went to that beach when I was uh, a young boy. It was just uh, one year before the Turkish invasion. It was seen as the pearl of Cyprus. It was a beautiful beach. It was very cosmopolitan. Uh, it was a place for artists, intellectuals, as well as holiday makers. And it is the bargaining chip. It's always been seen as the one part of Cyprus that uh, the North was pre prepared to give up. But it will need much, much more than that for there to be uh, a deal. I would... Uh, take to task the title Peace at Last, which a lot of um, media are using. For many Cypriots, there is peace now, 
uh, maybe there's division, but there's peace. Um, and what people fear is that after a potential um, agreement, there will not be peace. Why is that? Well, there's mistrust on both sides, let's be honest. These, these uh, uh, fears go back many, many uh, decades and centuries. Uh, the scars from 1974 are still there. We've been here before, in 2004, when there was an agreement. It was put to the two sides. Uh, and in that year, uh, the Greek Cypriots uh, turned down that particular deal, and I fear that may happen again. You think it may happen again? Uh, but explain to us why, if there is a deal, there could be more instability. Well, because both sides feel insecure. Um, the key element for most Greek Cypriots is the fact that there are foreign troops on the island. There are 40,000 Turkish troops. Now, if there's any kind of agreement, deal, unification, whatever you call it, if there are still those Turkish troops, how can the Greek Cypriots feel secure? I'd ask a question, which other country in the world would accept foreign troops on their territory? I don't know of any others that would do that. All right. It's a, it's a question we're going to put to our panel. First, though, let, let's see what the situation is like in Geneva. Top diplomats flying in uh, for the talks that began Monday, graduating to the heart of the matter. Who controls what? A deal is closed, says the new UN Secretary General. But, quote, don't expect miracles. Ellen Gainsford. Bringing together two sides of an island divided for over 40 years. That's the aim of officials gathering in Geneva for a crunch conference. They're hoping to unite Cyprus into a federation. The United Kingdom, Greece and Turkey are all present as guarantor powers. Cyprus has been divided since 1974, when Turkish troops invaded in response to a coup attempt backed by Athens. The island was partitioned. The northern third is controlled by Turkish Cypriots, the southern two-thirds by Greek Cypriots. UN peacekeepers now safeguard a buffer zone between the two sides. A territorial trade-off could be the make-or-break factor in the talks. Both sides exchanged maps showing their vision this Wednesday. Another sticking point is security on the island. We need to find instruments, instruments that allow for the implementation of the settlement that will be achieved in a way that guarantees simultaneously the response to the security concerns of the Turkish Cypriot community and of the security concerns of the Greek Cypriot community. After the 1960 Treaty of Guarantee between Cyprus, Greece, Turkey and the United Kingdom, the island is banned from political or economic union with any other state, with the Sinese guaranteeing Cyprus's independence. Any peace deal is likely to include changes to this agreement, a potential cause of friction. Greek Cypriots want an overhaul of the current security setup, while Turkish Cypriots say it must be maintained. An estimated 30,000 Turkish troops remain deployed on the island. Well, let's go to Esra Aigen in uh, Geneva, columnist uh, for the Turkish Cypriot Daily Havadis. Thanks for joining us here in the France 24 debate. Uh, we heard the uh, UN Secretary Hello. General there saying, uh, don't expect miracles. Uh, what are your expectations? Um, first of all, I would like to make a correction. I'm not uh, working for that daily. I'm a freelance journalist working on both sides of Duly the island. Duly noted. Okay. Um, it, well, uh, as, as, as you know, today the guarantor powers and the two sides have come together um, and um, in a historic move I have d begun debating or discussing the guarantees and security issue on the island. Have started, have started, and, uh, go ahead. This, yes, um, yes, and, and your question was? What are your personal, personally, what are your expectations? Is there going to be a deal? Okay. Yeah, um, I don't personally expect a deal um, now from today and tomorrow's uh, conference in Geneva. I think uh, the sides will, will go back to their respective countries. Um, I expect the dialogue to continue as long as there is not a b b breakdown here, which, it, which I don't expect. It would be a big surprise. Um, I expect the sides uh, to go back to respective countries, continue dialogue, and uh, 
uh, come back to maybe Geneva, probably Geneva again, to continue face-to-face -face discussions. Um, the expectations from the conference were initially maybe a deal uh, was possible, but right now um, it doesn't uh, look like it and the expectations have been um, diminished. Have been lowered. Uh, Ezra, you heard Andreas Evagora yeah. say that the big problem for Greek Cypriots is uh, how mm -hmm. can they trust the, uh, the other side if Turkish troops remain in Cyprus after an agreement? I completely agree with him. I understand the Greek Cypriot concerns. Um, I have many Greek Cypriot colleagues and friends who tell me the same uh, thing, um, who have the same comments. I understand the Greek Cypriot fears. Um, however, I also understand the, uh, the Turkish Cypriot fears. Um, there is a big fear on the part of the Turkish Cypriot community, um, at least the majority of the Turkish Cypriots, that the event of uh, 1963 will uh, repeat. So there is um, there is um, mutual fear on uh, on both sides. Greek Cypriots fear Turkey. Turkish Cypriots fear Greek Cypriots. Um, it is a very difficult situation. Um, however, I think a middle ground can be found. It is possible. Um, we, but the only way is for the two sides to understand each other's fears, um, not to dismiss these concerns, not to dismiss these fears, because I know for a fact that um, fears on both sides are sincere. Um, so uh, the only way is uh, to to listen, to understand. To, to listen to, to both have, sides. To let, let me bring empathy. in. Let me just bring into yeah. Jas Jasper Mortimer on this, who's in Nicosia, our correspondent. Uh, Jasper, it sounds binary. Either Turkish troops remain or they leave. Yes. Uh, look, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, confirm what uh, both of your interlocutors were saying just now. Uh, you know, the Turkish presence of Turkish troops is both uh, resented uh, by the Greek Cypriots, uh, and it is regarded as necessary by the Turkish Cypriots. This is the dilemma of Cyprus. Uh, what is security to the one side is a threat to the other. I was speaking to uh, an economist on the Greek Cypriot side, uh, George Koumoulos, who is also a columnist in the Greek Cypriot-owned newspaper, the Cyprus Mail. And he was saying that a possible interim, a possible middle way uh, for solving this security problem would be to allow a limited number of Turkish troops to remain on the island for a limited time, say 10,000 Turkish troops instead of the existing 30,000 to remain for 10 years. Uh, and he thought that Greek Cypriots would approve of such a plan in a referendum if there was a cast iron guarantee that at the end of that limited time, the Turkish troops would be withdrawn. Now, the big question is, how do you erect a cast iron guarantee? Because uh, Greek Cypriots are not going to trust the word of the Turkish government. Uh, Greek Cypriots would want to know that there is some other force that could force Turkey to withdraw its troops at the end of that time. But, you know, an awful lot of ugly things happened in Cyprus between 1963 and 1974. Uh, and those, uh, those things have not been forgotten. And for many Turkish Cypriots, they know that the only thing that Greek Cypriot fanatics fear is the Turkish army. So, Jasper, just put, remind our viewers very briefly, 1963, what happens? What, what happened was, look, the Cyprus constitution was drawn up uh, uh, under negotiation, under British supervision, and neither side actually liked it very much. Uh, they both uh, chafed uh, at its restrictions. 
uh, and the Greek Cypriots, who were in the majority, um, decided to change the constitution. The Turkish Cypriots saw that those changes were not in their interests. They disapproved of them. They uh, walked out of the parliament. The Greek Cypriots went ahead with those changes. And then uh, a very ugly thing happened. Uh, violence broke out and everybody knew the violence was going to happen. Uh, you know, Greek Cypriots of goodwill warned their Turkish Cypriot friends not to come to work uh, the next day. Uh, and, uh, you know, everybody knew it was going to happen and it did happen. Uh, and uh, there was bloodshed and eventually British troops came in and then other countries came in uh, to try and hold the peace. All right, this was more than a half century ago, three years after independence. Uh, Andreas Theopanos, who's also uh, in Nicosia, uh, joins us now. He heads the Cyprus Center for European and International Affairs. More than half a century later, uh, can Cypriots from both sides uh, turn the page? And uh, can a cast iron deal uh, whereby uh, there is a trust that those Turkish troops will depart be reached? I, you see, there are various narratives. The narrative we just had before, it's not the only one in relation to what happened in 1963. But I would not, uh, I would not say, I want to comment about uh, what is happening today. Now, in the 60s was, were a very difficult period. It was not only the Greek Cypriots, I would also say there were a lot of foreign interventions. Uh, Turkey bombed the island twice, three times in the 60s as well. But the different thing after 1974, after the invasion, uh, we have a different perspective among uh, both Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots. Both of them rediscovered the Republic of Cyprus. I think. Um, Greek perspectives today understand and include that uh, there should be an effective uh, participation. There must be stakes of Turkish Cypriots in the um, in, in a peace deal, but at the same time, they consider that there must be continuity of the Republic of Cyprus. Second, Cypriot Greeks are very much prepared to not only to accommodate but cooperate and work with Turkish Cypriots. But at the same time, they understand that the interest of Cypriots should be primarily served. It's one thing uh, to have a broader cooperation, but we cannot think to satisfy the interest of foreign powers in Cyprus, and I'm talking about uh, Turkey. They show, they show troops and guarantees. There are various ideas. If we need uh, a, a transition period, it will be important to understand that this can be done with a multinational force, perhaps the Security Council, without, without any unilateral right of intervention. I think that the issues today are